Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Thanks for stopping by. It is time to continue the progress on the reassembly of the Duo Melon machine after a year plus of me forgetting how this thing goes back together. It's time to put all of the gears and stuff back in the front of this. Yeah, excellent, exciting. This is fantastic. Let's see if we can't remember. <laughs> Let's see if we can't remember how this thing goes back together and actually make it work the way that it should. So gearboxes and spring clips and machine spacers and all that, never been my thing really. My dad used to rebuild automatic transmissions all the time. This is far less complicated than one of those, so surely I can figure out how to get these back in here where they belong. These are the gears that come out of this box, which is what transfers power from the electric motor. It operates all of the power feeds on this thing. So let's see if we can't get these gears stuffed back in this box where they belong without any extra pieces left over. So that noise you hear in the background is my little shop heater blowing on my little shop dog, keeping her nice and comfy while she supervises the progress. So I just remembered about a year ago, I watched a strikingly handsome gentleman take one of these apart, and uh, he's got some detailed images here of how that uh, all goes together, so that'll help. Alright, let's start off. How about we start off with gear number one? It sounds like a good place to start, and it goes here, as we, we did. We worked right to left, and this has got to be driven in because there's a big snap ring that holds that in place. snap ring. Oh, I grabbed the wrong set. Well, there we go. Come on. Snap. in this one, bag, was, key, gear, oh, get in there, come on, uh. what's, what's the problem? Why don't you want to go home? Goodness gracious, that's a perfect fit almost. Okay, now 
three. Two of five. Okay, that is not keyed. Number three it does have a bronze bush. Ooh. maybe? Ah, it's hard to tell. The one there is. Yeah, that's more like it. Okay, one, two, three, and then there's a snap ring. Yeah, snap ring there. Three, four, and this is going to be the same thing, probably. Spacer. Is it? Yeah. Spacer. One, two, three, four, and then what? It's going to go five here. Is that keyed? It is. This and then this has to slide back and forth because it has teeth on it that engage or disengage with this shaft. There we go. here like this and then snap ring and that's it man I was really making this more difficult in my head than it that needed to be is there a snap ring goes on that no what's going on where's this go oh it's on this
Boom. There we go. So we can, yeah, we can power everything. That doesn't slide as easy as I would like, but it does slide. So now that I've got this gearbox together, let me show you just how simple this is. I was really overcomplicating its reassembly in, in my head, which I, I'm guilty of doing quite often. So we've got power from an electric gearbox here that transmits power via a shaft into a universal joint here that I'll show you. And it powers this gear, which in turn is linked by the teeth all the way across. You can see we're turning them all. Now, if we wanted to engage the power feed on the saddle back and forth well this gear is freely spinning on the lead screw which is this but this gear here is actually keyed to the shaft and I can engage it into the teeth and now it turns that entire shaft and moves the saddle you can see I'm moving it pretty pretty easily just by hand either back or forth depending on the direction of the power of the input gear so that's and that's awesomely simple, or disengage it. Or I can power the knee up and down, this whole unit, by engaging this little uh, gear here, I guess you'd call it. Now, right now, this gear is spinning freely on this shaft, but you can see it's got teeth on it there that engage with teeth on this, and this is keyed to the shaft. So once it's locked, you know, it transmits power into that uh, knee drive and that's it right i can't can't really turn that by hand but you get the idea they're really super simple and they're actuated by some little levers that go here right super simple i like that So here's the front gearbox cover. There was no gasket or anything. It was just sealed with some sort of, I don't know, gasket maker, some sort of shellac, maybe. Not, not exactly for sure. So I'm just going to clean this back off. And then we will reinstall it. This thing, when I took it apart, I remember that it had, what, I guess, what you'd call jack screws right there. And then one on this end. Because this front gearbox cover is also dowel pinned on it would be pretty hard to get off uh, without uh, these jack screws to help separate the case so that's pretty neat that they uh, the engineers thought forward enough uh, to now right when the guy who's taking it back apart to service it you know trying to make life easy on him so that's nice something you don't see you know in modern uh, you know, equipment unless it's real industrial anyway I guess So although I like the fact that they put in these jack screws, that's not a very good sealing area there. They didn't leave hardly any room for a gasket or anything. I guess you could run the jack screw in to where it's flush and put some sealant on this one. But really you got like a sixteenth of an inch or less of a mating surface to seal here. So this was a high speed box where it slung a lot of oil. It'd probably leak. So for a gasket or a seal around this, I'm using this Permatex uh, number two, just a non-hardening gasket or sealing material. Works actually really well. It reminds me of the same thing that was on here originally, 
you know, it's not going to stick these two covers together permanently or anything. So it has to come back apart. It can. And it's not some high pressure box either, so this should seal pretty well. So now that the front cover's on, I got my two little uh, sockets for my selectors for the power feed on and off. And you see that's a little cam or an offset. And if you turn this, well actually this engages with either the gear or this little piece here, which just engages some teeth, and either turns on or off power feed for either the knee or the saddle. So this, I thought, that I was going to have to take this all back apart, the front of this, to get to the locking screw that holds this in. You can see it's got a slot there. Otherwise, it just pulls in and out, which is not good. But then I realized that it has a access right here. So that's nice. Save me some effort. So, oh, ball tent engaged. Yeah, there we go. That didn't work. I think so. Uh-oh. Is that gonna work? I'm gonna pay ball. set screw in so it's got one set screw that goes in and just keeps this thing from pulling out and then another set screw that goes in on top of that and locks it so pretty neat actually with it all works Nice positive detent. There we go. I gotta do the same to this one. So I had to go back in when I originally tore this down and uh, weld these, this cam or this offset there. I had to weld that up because it was worn so, so badly from uh, just a lot of use. So I welded that back up and machined it down to where it properly fits, or at least it, I hope that it properly fits, it should, into that gear. Yeah, it does. So now we should have a nice uh, engagement of our power feeds. I remember having some issues with that when I test ran this thing. So screw or spring in. A little ball for the detent in. Take 
going to work. Uh, maybe let me turn this. Engage or not. I'll have to turn that to get that to where my spring will spring, I guess. Oop. Everything's falling out. Everything on this machine is just so tight toleranced, even these little fittings and stuff, which is good. It makes them going back together a little tight. And this just locks it second set screw or that first set screw down there we go bada boom bada bang so all the power feeds on this machine the saddle the knee the table all powered by this one uh, external gearbox really and it just feeds via shaft into this gearbox and then you can choose one or all uh, on at the same time so pretty neat I think it's always on there Hello, girl. Hello. So this being a low-speed gearbox, it's not really going to take any kind of special oil. I'm going to use uh, Mobile 600 XP 68 uh, because it's what I got. Um, you know, there was no wear in this thing basically to amount to anything, even though it's 30-something years old. And when I took it apart, it's not like it was still completely full with fresh, clean oil. So pretty low wear item. So we have a fill. We have a drain. We have a sight glass, and that oil level is just enough to keep it above the teeth inside of that gearbox. That way, Cora, hello. That way, when when uh, when the gears move around, they pick up oil and they transmit it on down the line. You've spun the little thing at the I don't know the auto parts store. You know how it works, and it gets moved down the line. It drains down the teeth, gets down the gears, and gets on the needle bearings and all that stuff. So let's fill this thing up. It's not going to be above this opening here and see if this leaks or not. It shouldn't. Better not. Hello, Cora. You want to hold the funnel for me? So I'm going to give this thing a drink of the good stuff, but don't drink too much. This stuff's expensive. A little funnel in there that'll promptly fall out as soon as it's completely full and get all over the floor. So here we go. Full yet? Mm -hmm. I guess so. Maybe that site's just so dirty. I'm not seeing it. Okay, let's about to drain out this side, so that's all I'm putting in it. How about that? That's full, and you didn't tell me. And we're super close to draining out on this side.
goodness gracious, where'd that go? I found it. Ah, there we go. How is that supposed to go again? Okay, there we go. Just like that. Engage, disengage, engage, disengage. Okay, I like that. So this power feed selector, 90 degree gearbox, lead screw nut, whatever you want to call it, or all of the above. It does not get oiled from the oil lines or anything, so we pack it in grease, right? Or that's what I did. A little molly grease here. It was packed in grease when I took it apart, or it had grease on it. So putting a little quality grease on it, that way it'll stay nice and lubed up and last. So we are making really good progress on the reassembly of this machine and now it's time to install one of my favorite features that this machine has and from my experience usually machines of this size and larger will normally have something of, of this nature and I'm gonna I'm just gonna call it the auxiliary control because I don't know I don't know the technical name for it but what this is it's a way to move the table both right and left without having to reach out to the end of the table because this is 12 by 54 or whatever. If you were trying to dial in a part, let's say you've got an indicator in the quill, you're trying to dial in some feature that's on the part that you're doing. Well, you will need to operate both the saddle and the table at the same time. You know, you may have to reach you know, beyond your capabilities and then try to get your head in over the work to see the indicator. And you know, it's just uncomfortable. And in some ways, sometimes it's un impossible. So engineers featured in you know, an auxiliary control like this that allows someone to comfortably operate both the table right to left and the saddle at the same time so you can dial in a part. My canteen mill has a really nice set, complete set of power feeds and you know, just, uh, just hand controls to move both the saddle and the table all from uh, the back side of the machine. You know, this one, you can do it from the front side, but it is definitely a neat feature to have. And let's see if we can't get this one permanently reinstalled. So a little closer look. So we have a graduated dial here just like we would have on our hand controls at the ends of the table. So we can move in precise increments with this. We, we're not guessing. And all it is is power transmitted through this shaft via the hand wheel into this bevel gear, which is just a socket with a key in it. Let's see if we get you maybe you'll be able to see it there's a key there that engages with the key that is cut all the way down the length of the lead screw so the lead screw just slides through this normally unless you turn it manually so if we decide to use this when we turn it the key engages with that cut keyway all the way down the length of the lead screw turns it it engages with the lead screw nut obviously and moves the table back and forth so it super basic what's going on here just a really nice extra feature to have that you don't see on your common size milling machine usually so I tore this whole unit down and cleaned it up you know, but uh, I didn't do every piece on this machine but I did do this one because it was kind of kind of gunky and didn't didn't work very well but now and this handle was bent as well I put it in the press and uh, straightened it so I think somebody had hit it with a forklift or or something and uh, what is going on oh there's a snap ring there and uh, I don't think it necessarily got used all that much because it was for one it was bent 
and for two it's just all crusty but now it should work exactly like it was designed to now it's all straightened up and cleaned up I have to take all this apart in order to get to the screws that hold you know, these two together well I have to take it down that far anyway So this hand wheel has kind of a double safety built in. Just like most hand wheels that are on the front of a machine, you have to push it in because it's spring loaded or else it won't engage the gear. Right? But you can also, with this, pull the whole unit out and it totally disengages from the uh, from its uh, gear mesh with, that, uh, with its mating gear. So you know, it's a pretty common place to stand right here. And uh, they they thought about safety a little bit when they made this thing. So I'm going to do a rough backlash check on this uh, lead screw here in the saddle. So we got our dial on here. Let's just turn this to zero, get it lined up, and then turn it back the other way and see how much slop there is in the movement before the saddle actually engages. Wow, so less than 15 thousandths. I'm just doing it by hand. We could put an indicator up there, but you'll... You'll just have to trust me. That's pretty good. You know, I did no adjustments on the lead screw that goes through the center here. Plus, this runs a gear that hooks into a gear here that powers the lead screw. So we have a gear-to-gear -gear tooth contact here that can give us backlash. Plus, the wear in the screw and the nut. Uh, you know, 15 thousandths. Less than 15 thousandths, actually not bad. Well, Chloe's out there barking at her shadow. It's dark, and that's all I'm going to get done today, I think. Still a lot to do, though. Still got to install the power feed gearbox. That's a big job. All of the wiring. Got to fit the gib to the saddle. Still got to do that. Got to put it on the table and fit its gib, and potentially figure out why the quill on this thing is sticky, because it is. So I think that's it for this week anyway. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, it is much appreciated. Make sure, if you haven't, and if you enjoy the videos, to hit that thumbs up button. Like the videos. That's the same thing. Share it. I don't know. Subscribe. Yeah. Cora would appreciate that. Wouldn't you, girl? You'd appreciate that, wouldn't you? Yeah. See? Cora would appreciate it. And so would I. That's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.